For the past 80 years, the US dollar has dominated the world economy as the global reserve currency, the currency everyone uses for international trade. This has given the US prestige and power the likes of which no other country has. For just about everyone alive today, it's always been like this. It's hard to even imagine a world where the dollar isn't supreme where oil and gold and other commodities aren't priced in US dollars. But right now, the ground is shifting rapidly. Over the past year alone, major exporting countries around the world have signed or announced deals that will bypass the US dollar in world trade. A declining US dollar could be disastrous for America. If other countries aren't using the US dollar for trade, the demand for US dollars will dry up. This will cause the value of the US dollar to fall against other currencies, and that will force the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates in order to attract investors to the dollar. Those higher interest rates will mean everything, from buying houses to starting a new business will be more expensive. The result? A much lower standard of living for Americans. But it would also mean America would no longer have the same influence on the world stage it wouldn't be able to use the dollar as a way of leveraging its power against other countries. Ultimately, it would mean the end of America's status as the world's preeminent superpower. But is this really happening? And if it is, why is it happening? How did we get here? And what will happen to America now? In this video, we will answer all these questions, but before we go any further, Make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest economic analysis on the trends that are reshaping our world. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button to help us spread the word. First of all, what is a global reserve currency? Simply put, it's the currency used for international trade. It would be difficult for every importer and exporter to buy and sell in the many different currencies used around the world. Not to mention, it would be risky. Say you're a European manufacturer, you put in an order for microchips with a Japanese company and agree to pay for it in Japanese yen. Now imagine that by the time your goods arrive, the value of the euro has fallen against the yen. It turns out you have to pay more for those microchips than you thought you would. Or maybe you agree to pay for it in euro. In this case, it's the Japanese exporter who takes the hit. They get less money for their product than they thought they would. So to avoid this kind of risk, you use a global reserve currency for your trade instead. You use the US dollar. Now to be clear, the US dollar hasn't always been the reserve currency. In fact, over the past six centuries, since the beginning of the era of global trade, there have been six different reserve currencies, each of them lasting about 100 years. The US dollar has been the reserve currency for the past 80 years, or the past 100 years, depending on how you count it. The world's reserve currency. Portugal, 1450 to 1530. Spain, 1530 to 1640. Netherlands, 1640 to 1720. France, 1720 to 1850. Great Britain, 1815 to 1920. United States, 1945 to who knows. The US dollar emerged as the global reserve currency during the period between the two world wars. Its status was officially solidified during World War II with the Bretton Woods Agreement. Under this deal, the US's allies agreed to peg the value of their currencies to the US dollar, which itself was pegged to gold, at a rate of $35 for one ounce of gold. In essence, a US dollar was a promissory note, giving the holder the right to one thirty-fifth of an ounce of gold. This gave the Western world amazing price stability. International trade became easy, and everyone had faith in the value of the currencies they were trading in, because they were pegged to the US dollar, and by extension, to gold. But by the 1960s, the US was running a large deficit. Government spending had soared because of two things happening at once. One was the Vietnam War, which was a long and expensive quagmire that ate up the government's budget. The other was President Lyndon Johnson's Great Society program, which created many of the social programs that Americans rely on today. They too proved to be very expensive. 
To keep up with the government's demand for spending, the Federal Reserve printed new money. By the late 1960s, many countries, especially France, began to doubt that the U.S. had the gold reserves to cover all the dollars in circulation. In the summer of 1971, French President Georges Pompidou called America's bluff. He sent a warship to New York City to pick up the gold that France was owed on its massive reserves of U.S. dollars. The administration of President Richard Nixon panicked. The government was worried that this would be the beginning of a run on the U.S.'s gold reserves. So in August of that year, Nixon went on live TV and announced to the nation that he was taking the U.S. dollar off the gold standard. A U.S. dollar could no longer be exchanged for one thirty-fifth of an ounce of gold. The currencies that were tied to the U.S. dollar were unpegged from the dollar and allowed to float freely against each other in global forex markets. Nixon said the move away from gold was temporary, but 52 years later, the U.S. dollar still hasn't been repegged to gold, and the idea of it happening today seems laughable. In the years after Nixon's move, during the 1970s and 1980s, the U.S. and most of the countries that were part of the Bretton Woods system experienced massive inflation. By the early 1980s, the value of an ounce of gold had gone from $35 per ounce to over $600 per ounce. Put another way, the U.S. dollar lost nearly 95% of its value against gold. And today, gold is selling for around $2,000 an ounce, meaning the U.S. dollar has lost another two-thirds of its value against gold since the early 1980s. This phenomenon of the Federal Reserve printing money and the money losing more and more of its value over time is at the heart of concerns that the U.S. dollar is coming to its endgame as the reserve currency. And what's really interesting is that this is not the first time in history that this has happened. Several years ago, legendary billionaire investor and hedge fund manager Ray Dalio put together an analysis of the history of currencies. He found that the currencies of the world's dominant powers have gone through this process time and again, going all the way back to the Roman Empire. According to Dalio's analysis, each of the five global reserve currencies that came before the U.S. dollar went through more or less this same process. First, the global superpower overextends itself and struggles to pay its bills, so it prints more money. That leads to a devaluation of the currency and a decline in the demand for that currency. As demand for the reserve currency falls, its exchange rate falls with it. Everything the dominant global power buys on the global markets becomes more expensive. To prop up demand for its currency, the dominant power raises its interest rates. This helps keep foreigners buying that currency, but it also makes doing business more expensive. Home loans, business loans, and government debt become much harder to carry. Does this sound familiar? It's essentially what the U.S. has been going through over the past year. And that's worrying because of what history shows comes later. Eventually, over a period of time that can be years or decades, the government and people of the reserve currency country can no longer afford their debts. Often what happens is the government defaults on its debt and starts selling off its assets. One famous example is France, which had the global reserve currency in the 1700s. In 1797, it defaulted on its debt. Six years later, it sold the Louisiana Territory to the U.S., the famous Louisiana Purchase. A decade later, the French franc lost its reserve status to the British pound. Now the U.S. is on this same downward slope, and it's been on it for 50 years since Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. So far, the process has been very slow. So why is it accelerating now? The short answer is massive money printing since the 2008 financial crisis and, more recently, the Ukraine war. When Vladimir Putin's forces invaded Ukraine in February of 2022, the U.S. and its allies responded forcefully, and the U.S. did something that alarmed much of the world. It froze the Russian central bank's U.S. dollar reserves, $300 billion worth of holdings. At the time, neither the Western media nor the U.S. government made a big deal out of this. It was just one part of the sanctions that the West placed on Russia. But the governments of the world noticed. 
and many became alarmed. They realized that the trillions of dollars they collectively hold in U.S. reserves aren't really their own money. The U.S. can essentially take that money away from them at any time. Do something America doesn't like, and the billions of dollars of wealth you saved up trading with America disappear. It's as if you sold all those goods to America for nothing. So now many countries around the world have accelerated efforts to stop relying on the U.S. dollar and start building reserves in other currencies. And the country leading that effort has been China, through its ties with the BRICS countries. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. This is an alliance of countries whose open goal is to jointly become the world's dominant economic power by 2050. Today, the BRICS countries account for more than 40% of the world's population and around a quarter of the world's GDP. They are not yet the world's dominant power, but their economies are growing much faster than Western countries. Over the past year, the BRICS countries have begun making plans to create a new currency to be used for trade between them. The plans are nowhere near finalized, but the proposal on the table looks like this. Each country in the BRICS contributes a certain amount of its own assets, in exchange for which it would receive some of this new currency. The assets they put up could be gold or silver or some other precious metal. They could be some other commodity, like oil or even manufactured goods. The countries would then use this currency for trade between them. Such a currency could have huge advantages over the U.S. dollar because, unlike the U.S. dollar, it would be backed by hard assets. But even before the new BRICS currency is ready, the BRICS countries are moving away from using the U.S. dollar. Two of them, China and Brazil, recently reached an agreement to use their own currencies for trade between them. That's $150 billion of annual trade that will no longer take place in U.S. dollars. China recently announced it had completed its first purchase of liquefied natural gas in Chinese yuan instead of dollars. That purchase was from French energy giant Total. Yes, even France is getting in on the action. After a three-day trip to China in early April, French President Emmanuel Macron called on Europe to reduce its dependence on the U.S. dollar. Around the same time that happened, India and Malaysia announced a new trade deal that will see the two countries use the Indian rupee for trade between them instead of the U.S. dollar. Everywhere you look in the world today, be it Europe or Asia or Africa or Latin America, the world is moving away from the U.S. dollar. But for all that, it's important to realize that even with these changes, the U.S. dollar is still by far the most common currency used for international trade. In the fourth quarter of 2022, the U.S. dollar accounted for 58% of all world trade, according to data from the IMF. The second most common currency, the euro, accounted for only 20% of global trade. The Chinese yuan accounted for just 2.7%. And while the Chinese yuan share is growing, it seems to be coming at the expense of currencies like the euro and the Japanese yen, and not at the expense of the U.S. dollar. At least for now, the Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate hikes have made the U.S. dollar attractive to foreign investors. Today, the U.S. dollar is at historically high levels against the euro and other currencies. You can earn more interest holding your money in dollars than you can in euro, Japanese yen, or Swiss francs. But those high interest rates are bad for the U.S. economy, as the slowdown in the housing market and the recent collapse of several U.S. banks has shown. If the demand for U.S. dollars as a trade currency drops more in the future, the Fed will have to hike rates even higher to maintain dollar demand, and that could mean serious trouble. But before you conclude the U.S. dollar is headed for the dump heap, there is one other lesson from history we should heed. Historically, it took more than reckless money printing to destroy a reserve currency. It took a major global conflict. For instance, the French franc lost its status as reserve currency during the Napoleonic Wars, which France lost to the British. After that, the British pound ruled the world 
until World War I. Between World War I and World War II, the power of the pound eroded and the power of the U.S. dollar grew. After World War II, the U.S. dollar was firmly established as the global reserve currency. And you don't have to lose the war to lose your reserve currency status. Britain was on the winning side of both world wars, yet the pound lost its reserve status. So if history is anything to go by, some kind of earth-shaking global conflict has to happen for the US dollar to truly lose its reserve status. And it can happen even if the US emerges as the winner in that conflict. This should serve as a warning to America's leaders. Don't jump recklessly into conflicts, because America is at a stage where even if it wins, it can lose. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, please click the like and subscribe button to help spread the word and check out more of our videos to keep up to date on global economics.